Hello, Rizzy Gear to you, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It feels really good to be saying that again because it's been a couple months since I recorded the last episode. So, to get this out of the way, yeah, it's been a little while, and it's probably not going to matter that much of people watch this after Let's Play is already over and things like that. But, long story short, there was PAX at the beginning of September, and then I was moving across the country to go work at the Disney College program. So, yeah, that's the reason why I haven't been able to upload or Let's Play videos for a little while. Except for Tetris and Splatoon and all that fun stuff. But anyway, in today's video, we are finally going to be progressing through the main story. Kinda. We'll be taking care of a two shrines and a side quest uh, before we move on, but there will be story progress in this video. It's just going to be more so towards the end of the video itself. So think of this as more of like a path to the story progress rather than like the story progress itself. I'm sure it makes sense to somebody out there. So, we want to go over here and we want to go this way. So, the two shrines we'll be taking care of in this video. Well, first of all, you can see the shrine tower for the Dementha Tower right there. So, it's way up there if you haven't seen it already. So, eggnog! I trusted you one for one second to keep following the path and you run into a wall. Uh, I swear, you're like Waffles and Reincarnate or something like that. But, anywho, we'll be going back over this way because our first shrine is going to be located up here. Uh, both shrines are going to be located in the same proximity of each other, so it's not like we're going to have to go across all over the map and things like that, so that's pretty fun. It's like I carefully planned this over the course of two and a half years. Yay! <laughs> So, we'll be continuing on over this way, and... Oh, I'm so sorry, puppy! I didn't mean to! You were just standing there, and you looked delicious. Can you even... Yeah, you can get um, meat from the wolves and things like that. I don't want to, but we'll go this way. You know, it's been a little while since we took care of one of these things. I'm gonna try and take out this thing. So, we got some tough enemies over here. We got a... Uh, looks like a silver... Mo um, uh, Lizothos right there. Uh, we'll be taking care of these guys, not because we really need to or anything like that, but more so because it might be a good idea to get some new weapons before we go into the next place. So, oh, that was a pretty good shot. You know, to be completely honest, I gotta say, I've not really practiced that much for these next couple of videos in a long time. I did practice for the next uh, Divine Beast, but I didn't actually do a whole lot of the, like, the um, side activities that we'll be doing in these videos, so... Yeah, it seems to be a running trend of uh, my channel that if I'm on hiatus for a little while, I don't do practice sessions or anything like that. So, yay, I suck at Let's Playing. I've only been doing this for nine years. Almost ten years at this point, now. So, let's go take care of you. Stabby, stabby, stabby. Slice, do, slice. Slice, do, die. Stab, 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 stab. Aha, you thought your friends could save you, but it was just me! That's not the weapon that I wanted. I want this one so I can do a jumping attack. What the heck?! <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to do a jumping sword slash, but it didn't work. Ah, there was still one of these here. I tried to do a jumping sword slash, but that ended up doing the shield surfing thingy. That's too hard for me to say. But, take two, you saw nothing, you're going to die! That's still not the right button. Alright, there we go. The lengths I'll go to to be unnecessarily epic are an enigma. Falcon Bow! Is that better than movie hand? Um, it's... What was it again? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely want to get rid of something for that. That sounds like a pretty decent weapon indeed. So let's go take care of this. Uh -huh, so your weapon and you only have one thing of health left and now you're going to stay here and mourn the loss of your comrades forever! Did you throw a barrel at me? No! Eggnog! Eggnog, come back here! Eggnog, come back here! Come back here and be my friend. We will make cupcakes together and then throw them at people. <laughs> Alright, enough getting sidetracked. So let's continue on over this way. 
and eventually we'll be able to reach our destination. This is the Ancient Columns. A pretty noteworthy place because it looks fancy, and I like things that look fancy. Be careful around here because there will be moblins all over the place, so there are going to be some tough enemies around this area. But another big reason why I wanted to come over to this place is because SHINY! Nothing, just as I thought. Hmm. It appears that this structure was designed to be exclusively accessed by the sword's chosen one. But designs can always be worked around, at least I hope. How do I get inside? I need to activate it somehow. I thought I made it clear that I'm not in need of an escort. It seems I'm the only one with a mind of my own. I, the person in question, am fine, regardless of the King's orders. Return to the castle and tell that to my father, please. That's one of my favorite memories in the entire game. <laughs> we get to see a bit more of uh, Link and Zelda's uh, interactions and the relationship early on in their relationship. That was a redundant way of saying that, but I don't care. But I just absolutely love that, that they didn't really get along at first when they met each other. Link is just doing his job and protecting Zelda, and she's getting annoyed because she is royalty, but she just wants to be left alone. I just absolutely love that. <laughs> And also that voice clip where she's like, stop following me. <laughs> That's one of my favorite voice clips from Zelda. The voice actress was amazing in this role. I don't care what anyone says, she was awesome. And it's probably for the best that Zelda didn't come into this shrine specifically because... It is a major test of strength. I mean, technically, she could have gotten in here if she did that one glitch where you can, like, go through the wall on the side of the shrine entrance or something like that. There's some kind of speedrunning trick they, like, again, let you do that, which uh, speedrunners like doing so they don't have to go through the opening cutscene of the shrine door opening. It's pretty interesting. I just find it amusing how speedrunners will go through so much effort to save off, like, two seconds of animations and things like that. Um, like, they'll spend months at a time uh, trying to figure something out like that. It's really amusing. I have a lot of respect for speedrunners. So, we can go over here. Uh, let's switch over to the Golden Claymore. This is nothing we haven't seen already before. Um, there's not really a whole lot that's special about this particular shrine, so we may end up just fast-forwarding this one because we've already seen several major tests of strengths already. Um, so we might uh, speed up this one and just uh, resume live commentary if something funny happens.
Spinny powers activate. Spinny, 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 spinny. Yay! We did it. We did it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No eating here tonight. Oh no eating here tonight. Oh no eating here tonight. We're on a diet. <laughs> Uh, earlier today, I started watching Monsters at Work, and it's a pretty cute show. I would have been super into it when I was a kid, but like, I'm gonna keep watching it um, in my own time because I like cartoons, and Monsters Inc. is one of my favorite mon um, Pixar movies ever, so it's a pretty cute show. Especially, I love the part in the movie when um, it's the first scene with Mike and Celia together, and as he's walking off, he's all like, Me and you, you and me, both of us together. One shrine down, and that's not even the one that I'm worried about for this episode. Oh boy, oh boy. It's, mm, 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 mm. Nope, I'm not looking forward to this one. So I'm gonna set up a beacon over here. Uh, I don't need this one active anymore, so we can get rid of that and never see it again. At least for a couple of more episodes. I don't actually know what the next one we'll be using for. I know we'll use it for a Korok episode sometime, but owie! That did a lot of damage. Where are my feelings? Why would you do that? <laughs> it makes me think of The Simpsons when uh, Homer's trying to steal the grease at Springfield Elementary and um, Brown's Keeper really catches them. <laughs> so um, he starts beating him up and Homer's like, Stop pummeling me, it's really painful. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm about to strangle you for a while. Yeah. Uh, that show's stupid. <laughs> For that one part when um, Homer's a food critic and so uh, the restaurant people are mad at him because he's giving them bad reviews. So then he's all like, what if we ban him from our restaurants? <laughs> oh, that would be impolite. I say we kill him. <laughs> uh, I cannot go down the cliff. Go this way. Mush. 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 Whip. I said whip. And now it's making me think of Charlie Chocolate Factory when Willy Wonka is all like, whipped cream is whipped cream, we're all just been whipped with whips. doing all the movie and TV quotes today, aren't I? <laughs> Alright, so this over here is where we want to go next. So, when you go over here, if you have the Shika um, shrine sensor thingy active, you may notice that it's beeping incessantly as you go across this area. And the reason for that is because of this stupid thing. So, what you want to do is you want to use a stasis on that, and make sure you have a heavy weapon with you. Um, a Knight's Claymore will probably do the trick. As long as it's a weapon that's pretty useful, uh, that's like a 2 handed weapon and things like that, you should be able to make it go flying. An Iron Sludge Hammer would probably be the best option for that. So, now we've reached a Kai Okoi Shrine. I remember when I was writing my notes for this, I misspelled uh, the shrine name as Kai Oreo. <laughs> the K and the R aren't even close to each other on the keyboard, so I have no idea how that happened. To use its foot in the shrine. Good luck, you're going to need it. This one sucks. Wind Guide K Oreo Shrine. Alright, the name of the shrine, Wind Guide, that makes me think of Talon from Soul Calibur, who's like the most adorable fighting game character ever. <laughs> I love Talon, she's so adorable. Um, but anyway, we are now in this place and. Uh... <laughs> so. We're not going to see the worst of it for a little while, um, but keep in mind that there are six treasure chests in this area. So, we've already come across our first one that's going to have the Korok Cleave, so that's going to be pretty useful. 
And this right here will be the primary gameplay gimmick of the shrine. So what we want to do, you want to be very careful not to have this blow up, but you can use the Korak Leaf to make this a float around and things like that. It is a pretty interesting concept, uh, having a, a puzzle based off of this and things like that. Um, because if you're going to have a physics engine and spend a lot of your development budget on it, you're going to want to make use of it. So, excuse me. I did not want to fall down there. I wanted to go up here so I can accomplish my destiny. You're over there now, aren't you? Okay, so this is the reason why I'm not that fond of the shrine. So, uh, I don't like this one. I do not like this one. I do not like this one. Because the balloon is a little bit finicky and it's a bit hard to control if you're not careful. And I don't like being careful. Being careful is for lame people. Or people who like, you know, are smart and stuff like that. So, yeah. Be careful just in general in life. That's a good rule of thought. Good rule of thought. That is an official term coined by me, Lady Gear to you. Everybody who says that will owe me a quarter. Um... What just happened? Uh, my screen went dark and I don't know why. The switch is still on. Alright, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. That's the first time it's ever happened on recording. So, uh, my screen just randomly went dark and then the capture card stopped working. The switch was still on and all the cords were plugged in just fine and I looked over them and nothing's wrong with the cords. So, I don't know what happened there. It's really weird. I, I've had problems before where like my cats would like intensely unplug my cord and things like that and that did cause a recording issue at one point, but I don't know what happened there. Uh, did we get that treasure chest? That's not a treasure chest, that's a torch. Okay, I thought I needed that one balloon to explosives for something in this area, but uh, that's Probably more so just teaching the player that they're going to have to use a puzzle like this for things and stuff like that. So, uh, this is the way I want to go. Alright, so what you want to do is that you want to move the balloons with the Korok Leaf. No other weapon will work with this. You're going to have to use a Korok Leaf for this. There might be some fancy way to do this with some other weapon, but I don't feel like being fancy today. What I do feel like is not falling off the face of the earth. Come on, you stupid platform. If you need to reset, just activate this over here. And that'll reset the puzzle. This is the big reason why I am not that fond of the shrine, because the puzzle is just so finicky and it's easy to fall off this thing. And I just, I'm not that big of a fan of it. I like the idea of it. The idea of a physics-based puzzle using wind is really cool. I just don't like how it's executed here. Let's try this one more time! We did it! If I can open the treasure chest. We did the thingy! And we get a gold ruby! Yay! Okay. I'm just making a note for myself to keep track of the treasure chest. Alright. Now we can go this way. It's gonna be super fun. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be the greatest day in the world. Mr. Sun came up and he smiled at me. He said it's gonna be a good one. Just wait and see. Jumped out of bed and I ran outside feeling so extra, extra divine. It's the best day ever. Yeah, I have a perfect memory for things nobody cares about. I sit over here and destroy you now. I wonder from time to time is like if I did like um um alley ooh you only have half a heart now that is not good uh, let's eat stuff I don't like eating things in shrines because I always feel like it's a waste because you get fully healed at the end anyway um, but it might be a good idea to grab something now I'm going to eat these things. Yeah, I always wondered, like, if I did, um, 
uh, charity bits or whatever. I don't remember. Um, donation. I always wondered if I did like donation bits on streams and things like that. If people would actually donate to hear me sing badly on purpose, because like. I probably could sing decently if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I don't like singing good. I like being a bad singer on purpose because it's funny. Because it's humorous. How do I get to that dress dress again? Okay, I don't think we can do anything with that until a little bit later. By the way, in my notes for this, I wrote that this is the shrine that haunts my dreams. <laughs> so that perfectly um, symbolizes uh, the hollows of this place, except it's not really symbolism because it's um, like directly saying that it haunts my dreams, so that would be more of a case of saying not showing or whatever. Anyway, dress chess. Forest Dweller Sword. We got the sword, and it's gonna be super epic and amazing. It's gonna be as epic as Mickey. So if we go over here now. Okay, that's something we'll need to do a little bit later. Actually, we need to do this now. Because activating that will activate the wind. Wind, guide me. I'm sorry, I just love Tom. She's so cute. She's like the most adorable fighting game character in the world, and I already said that, but it's still true. Talib is awesome. You know, that's kind of a big reason why Kazuya annoys me in Smash, because the thing with the uh, fighting game characters represented in Smash is that, like, of the six of them, I can think of off the top of my head, because um, you have Ryu, Ken, Terry, Kazuya, Min Min, and Little Mac, five of them are, like, big muscular guys. And the thing with Smash is that they're usually pretty good about having, like, diversity in um, character. You know, if they have a group of characters that have a good diversity of... Um, character body types and things like that, but like pretty much, except for Min Min, who kind of doesn't really count, um, the most of the fighting game guys in Smash are like big muscular guys, and it does really annoy me to see another one um, in Smash. And I don't mind Kazuya because Tekken is a really important series, and um, the company who makes Tekken games, um, Ben and Nemco. Uh, they also co-developed Smash Brothers, so of course they're going to get another character in the game. But at the same time, they also own Soul Calibur, so why couldn't that character have been Talon? I know it's pointless to be upset about this because like a lot of people like Kazuya and things like that, and I already got, I already got pretty much every character I wanted except for Lara Croft, but um, I already got Inkling and Pyra, so um, it's not really like I have anything to complain about. But still. Alrighty then, to cure that. <laughs> you. That's a game system, apparently. Okay, how many was this now? This was this is our fourth one, I believe, and it has a small key. We can open a locked door. And um, there's one more in this room. I'm trying to remember where it is. Okay, I think we have every treasure chest. I might have miscounted a moment ago, um, but we'll know for sure once we do this place that because the treasure chest icon will be on the map and things like that. So if we go up here now. We can head over this way, and that will take us to our, hopefully, final treasure chest. This would have been way more convenient if all these treasure chests were metallic, but apparently they weren't. And it's weird, because I was dreading that part where you have to navigate the platform across the area with the spiky blocks. I was dreading that part, but we went through that area pretty smoothly, so the shrine isn't as bad as I remember it being. I think I just had a bad ex first experience when I was playing through them the first time. but. Wasn't too bad. Except for the fact that it kind of killed my capture card briefly. I still have no idea how that happened. Your resource will notice no more coming this travel. Speak to the promise of a hero. Dot, dot, dot. In the name of Goddess Adia, I bestow upon you the spirit of. I like how he has those circly thingies near him. 
It makes me think of um, Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings. That was a great movie. I saw that with uh, James after he was giving him Pan Garmin um, when we were in Seattle for PAX, and that was an awesome trip. With those two shrines taken care of, now we'll be going over this way, and now we'll be making story progress! Woo! So let's continue on over this way. We have seen this route before in the order of the playlist, um, because this is the route we took over to the Debantha Tower. So that's going to be pretty fun. Lots of enemy camps in this area if you need to stock up on weapons. I think it'll be fine for now. Uh, so we'll be continuing on over this way. And hopefully we'll be able to take over the world. And it's going to be awesome. Oh, shall fear the reign of Gator. <laughs> uh, that is not the direction I want to go. I want to go just a little bit more. Eggnog. There we go. Eggnog. Hey dog, come on, let's go. Let's go, Eevee and Pikachu. You like Eevee and Pikachu? That's the best Pokemon game on Nintendo Switch. I'm half joking, half being serious about that because I didn't relax or chill that much. Like, I tried getting into that game, man. It was fine and all, but it kind of felt like a lesser. Okay, this will probably trigger a lot of people saying this, but. Eggnog move! This will probably trigger a lot of people by saying this, but honestly, Sword and Shield just kind of felt like a lesser X and Y. <laughs> because uh, the thing with that is that uh, what I really liked about X and Y was that I really liked how they handled the rival system in that game. Because it was like you were a group of friends going off to explore the world for the first time, which is a really nice experience. And I also kind of liked that you were the jerk rival. <laughs> because... Uh, um, all the goals that your friends are trying to do and things like that, you are the one who are getting into the way of them. And I don't get that kind of feeling with uh, Sword and Shield's rival. Like, I legit thought that he was the same character as the guy in Sun and Moon um, when I first saw him and things like that. It wasn't until James and Pan Garman told me it was a different character. Like, I thought it was the same character because he looks very similar and he has the exact same animations and things like that. And... I also just think X and Y is a, a nicer looking game, um, because Sword and Shield definitely does have some very visually impressive moments, but it's a lot less consistently good. X and Y looks very consistently good throughout the entire game, um, but Sword and Shield has a lot of problems with some of its visuals, like all the, a lot of the animations just don't look good at all. Um, there's a lot of really bad popping in the wild area um, that just looks really, really bad. Um, so... Yeah, I, I didn't enjoy uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield that much. What I do enjoy is details like that, how you can see the horse uh, trying to balance on the bridge as it's going across it, because it's all windy and things like that. It's such a good detail. Yeah. And now we're making our way towards this area. Yeah. And something really dumb is that whenever I go through this area, I remember something that happened in my first playthrough. So... You know that feeling you get when you listen to music while experiencing something, and then when you go through the thing again, you hear it, uh, you hear the music? This area, I was listening to... <laughs> it's really stupid. I was listening to an old video talking to Cans made where it was a parody of a Kesha song called Snow. So, going through this area, I remember very vividly him singing, I think I'll play in snow. Uh, 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 snow. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it's so stupid. I really like that video, but I can't find it anymore. Uh, he probably unlisted uh, it or deleted it or whatever, but that's not the important thing right now. The important thing right now is that we have reached the Rito stable. So, that right there is our destination. Quite the sight, isn't it? 